This is Miss Priester. I'm with my English 10B class. We have been reading The Teenage Brain by Francis Jensen. We've read chapters 1 through 4, Entering Teen Years, Building a Brain, Under the Microscope, Learning a Job for the Teenage Brain. We're going to have a discussion based on quotes from the text. These are anchored in some questions that we prepared in advance. The first question is, what makes the teenage brain unique? Anna, start us off. Uh, my quote is on page 58. Um... Uh, Jensen states, arborization or the branching out of neurons peaks in the first few years of life but continues as we've seen in adolescence. Gray matter d density peaks in girls at age 11 and in boys at age 14 and waxes and wanes throughout adolescence. Um, I think it's interesting and that girls mature or their brains mature faster than guys. Do you guys remember the ages when girls reach the maximum when they have the most arborization and they can learn the most? I think most? it's um, 13. Girls was 11 and boys was 14. 14. 14. Remember? And did we have the conversation about that? It's when kids are craziest. Yeah. yeah. You remember? Because like, cause your brain's like an overload because mm -hmm. of all that arborization. Okay, next one about what makes the brain unique. Oh, KJ's not here. Skip. Prefrontal cortex or lobe. Here's our next question. What does the development of the prefrontal cortex, prefrontal lobe, enable? Fontes, can you explain to us what Jensen says, please? Yeah. All right. Um, Jensen states in the diagram on page 35 that the frontal lobe enables judgment, insight, and impulse control. I agree because also I experienced the things that were mentioned in the diagram. Um, yeah. Do you guys remember what the development of the brain? Does your brain develop from back to front or front to back? Front. To, I mean, back to front. And where's the prefrontal lobe located? The front. In the front. In the front. And in teenagers, is your lobe as developed as mine? No. No, yours are not quite as developed yet. So. Because we haven't reached our growth spurt. Huh? Because we haven't reached our growth spurt. Because grow, don't grow stop growing when they're like. It's, it's different than growing physically. It's just your brain developing. It's just oh. that your brain, that part of your brain is still developing. Do you remember some examples of things? Can anybody add in there an example of something in the book where it talked about the effects of the teenager's brains, their prefrontal lobes not being developed where they didn't think something when through? They, when their kids wanted to do the puzzles when they were really hard, but the, the person didn't know why they wanted to do something harder than something that was easy. He's talking about mindset. He is talking about mindset. Oh. <laughs> what about in the book where it talks about, maybe after Keyshawn shares his quote, then maybe it'll help to jog your memories. Keyshawn, Keyshawn think of everything about the free prefrontal lobe. On page 35. Uh, Jensen. <clears throat> the author Jensen states how the frontal lobes sit mostly in, in entirely, and this area is concerned with executive function, judgment, insight, and impulsive control. So if teenagers don't have good judgment, we had some examples in the story of negative things that happened because of that. That one time when the kid got drunk and he almost froze to death because he was running away from cops. So was the part of him that was like, wow, I might freeze to death, was his judgment thinking things through? No. I'm in trouble. No. no, he was just thinking, was I'm in trouble. trouble. Yeah. He wanted to get away, but every, every time he got away, he got in more trouble. And the one time where the um, kid drowned and... Where he drowned in the pool, and his friends didn't even know that he what, drowned. What conditions? Was, but they made some poor decisions drunk, leading up. They were drunk. Drunk, and they decided to hop a fence to get into the pool and go for a, a dip. Swim. So they didn't think through all the way, like, yeah. oh, this is a bad idea. We could die. Nobody would know. Yeah. And unfortunately, the kid died. So it's really important that we're aware that the teenager's <clears throat> prefrontal lobe is not as developed yet. Let's go to our next question. How does learning occur in the brain? <laughs> Robbie, you're going to start us off on this? My quote's on page 73, and the author Jensen states that the more a piece of information is repeated or relearned, the stronger the neurons become, and the connection becomes like a well-worn path through the woods. Um, I guess this can remind me as probably like something that I want to practice, and then once I practice it, then I can start just, it's in my head already, so I'm repeating it more and more, and then eventually I, I don't have to repeat it no more, I just, I just know how to do it. I want you guys, somebody on their own without me prompting, to try to come up with a reply to what he said. This time, can somebody come up with a reply on your own? Use your sentence starters. Um, this reminds me as when I do something like, for example... Wait, no, I want to reread your quote, baby. Oh. 
The more, a pe- the more a piece of information is repeated or relearned, the stronger the neurons become, and the connection becomes like a well-worn path through the woods. So it helps. So, um, I agree with this, or this reminds me of um, like our memory and stuff, because that's what it is, right? Mm-hmm. So it's basically talking about memory, right? Isn't it? Okay. So you like short-term memory, long-term memory. Can I give an example? Uh huh. Um, this might sound really cheesy, but an example is for Red Riding Hood when she went to go to her grandma's house. She used to go through the woods, so it's like she didn't really need a map or anything to the. She so, knew the woods perfectly. So, like, do you guys have to think about brushing your teeth? No, no. no. it's already in our brain. It's, it's already in our brain. It's already in our brain. Like, like, teeth. Like it's in that path yeah. in your brain, like, right? Like, you lived here for like two years or something. You could just walk to the bathroom with your eyes closed. Exactly. You guys don't have to think about like. It's just like a daily life, a cycle. Yeah. Like a, like a cycle in your head, like. To do this to or you like, do you like need? Or do you need to like wake up and you need to like do you need a sp- or, like a certain person to wake you up for like school? Like some people would just wake up at a certain time perfectly. Yeah, because it's like you're just wired that way. But then it can happen to learning too. Like, do you have to stop and sound out every single word when you read now? No, no, no. no because why? Because we already know most of the words. It's already wired in your brain because you've seen them over and over and over again, and so it just comes to or you we faster. Just practice. And you've practiced, and that practice puts it in your puts it in a path in your brain, like Little Red Riding Hood. That was a nice connection. Good job, you guys. Let's go. Last one is now just for anybody listening. We're using a word in this one called triggered because on our campus we use the word triggered when kids are having a really strong emotional outburst, and sometimes those are due to things that happened in the kids' past. But when the kids get really upset like that, they oftentimes get so consumed by emotions that they don't even realize what's happening at the time and then later they'll kind of feel like they blacked out so what our question is what happens when the brain is triggered um Akela and then Kathy are both going to talk about this one go Akela. um so I have a quote on page 20 and 21 the author states with boys t- testosterone binds particularly friendly receptors in the amygdala the structure in the brain that controls the fight or flight response that is aggressive or fear. So you usually have a response based on you just um, get started. I agree with this quote because you see a lot of boys who are more aggressive than girls on campus and anywhere else in life. Mm-hmm. So it seems like that's something that's a little like unequal between boys to girls. Um, what about with triggering in general? So how does that relate to it? Yeah. Um, I agree with it. That statement from Jensen, because when a person, like, specifically as me, is if a person said something that I know that triggers me, it, it, like, fires me up. And I I know for, like, sometimes for girls, whenever something, like, inappropriate they say, it fires that girl up. So, when that firing up is happening, what part of the brain is that coming from? Where is, what? The amygdala. The amygdala. The amygdala. Because that's where all the emotions are held, and that's what, and if it, something's wrong with it, then you don't know how to control it. It's like the animal part of your brain, which is why it says reptilian. fight or flight, the reptilian. the reptilian. Yep, that's in the back yeah, of your brain. Some people get mixed up with words, and they have to, re- like, mm-hmm. ask a person to rephrase that, so they know what they actually said, just like me, or something like that. Um, Yeah. Kathy, let's do the second one. Then I have another prompting. I'm going to throw some Miss Kathy on the same topic. Go, honey. Um, I got a quote from page 57. Uh, Johnson states, Excision can come from outside or inside of your brain, but regardless if a particular pathway of cells and their synapses are activated, repeatedly the synapses between the, the, them strengths. Thus cause the fire together, wire together. I agree with this because when... It's like, cause like how Anna said about the amygdala, like it, like everything just rises up in your more just your emotions all, all start going crazy. And you just, adrenaline. Yeah, you start freaking out and like, yeah. That's What's in a way that someone the fire together, wire together, and the amygdala could all come together to be something that would trigger one of our kids? What would be an example? What could happen that could send somebody off the banging, deep end? Banging something in the wrong way, like banging the table. And then what could happen? They can. They're like. Like, they can remember what happened, like, where they heard that noise from, and they'll just think about it. Yeah. Like, like words? Smell. Like, flashbacks. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. Words, I, shows. I know someone on campus that hates when they call them Miha. Uh-huh. Because they, um, she, she hates that word because it has something to do with something that happened with her. So whenever someone says that to her, she wants to, like, 
she wants to like she freaks out and she wants to fight them so it, that word triggers her do you think as she's getting older is her prefrontal lobe able to calm her able to calm her down more like can she think it through um i'm actually not sure huh. but from what i've noticed no so what is from the book though as you get older what should you be able to do to your brain you should be able, be able to, to control, control it. it to control that amygdala and calm it down a little yeah. bit more okay um i think we're good you guys i'm happy with um our discussion let's go ahead and we're gonna say i'm gonna have each kid say who they are and then we're gonna say bye so we're wrapping up this has been a discussion by Keyshawn, kayla Fonte, anna robbie kathy and priester bye Thank you. <laughs>